各位午安，啊、哦，欢迎各位来参加我们啊、呃、一起跟 Scan 一起举办的这个啊、呃、动画的工作坊，啊、哦，今天我们特地请到那个沙盘纳艺术，美国沙盘纳艺术大学的那个教动画系的教授，特别来呃帮呃来举办这场讲座。那这这位教授呢？他之前是呃曾经做过迪士尼、梦工厂的一些动画，像早期的《花木兰》《埃及王子》啊、哦，这个教授都有参与。那他现在是那个呃 Sky 的那个动画系的教授。那今天呢，呃，特别请他过来，他会分享一下，就是说他之前在美国动画公司在呃在动画产业里面工作，他曾经参与过哪些影片，然后还有哪些。哦，他负责的部分，那另外也会介绍一下，就是呃，美国动画产业的分工。哦，那接下来呢，就会介绍一下，就是呃，如果同学有计划到美国去念动画系，那动画科系在教些什么？哦，那当然还有一个很重要，就是将来如果你呃准备要申请学校的时候，你的 portfolio 要怎么准备？动画的作品的准备？哦。那今天我们全程是讲英文，所以这边英文有没有听不懂的，可以帮我举手一下？完全听不懂。完好，完好。今天我们没有特别提供翻译，当然如果说你有什么样的疑问，可以尝试自己用英文沟通。如果不行，那我会代为翻译。但是呃，整场的讲座部分呢，我们没有同步翻译。OK， 哦，因为我相信在场的各位同学自己本身呢。就是计划要要出国，所以相对你们英文应该已经 ready 了差不多。那我们就是尝试看一看，听一下哦。就是教授，我也请他放慢速度。如果听不懂，想要他重复讲，重复再再讲一遍，你们要记得要举手，请教授来来啊、哦，再重复讲一下他他刚才讲的部分。OK， 那我们后面会留 Q&A。如果同学有任何的问题，关于呃作品啊，或者是。动画产业啦，美国现在动画的现况啦，我们在后面 Q A 的时候，同学都可以发问，好不好？好，那我们今天我们就来欢迎我们的那个 s k a t e 教授 Tina。OK <笑>。OK。I got one here.、Oh. I think. I let's see. Is my microphone on? If not,、oh, I can maybe, project. Maybe you, 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 you have to hold. That's that's fine. You need this one. All right, I'll, I'll put this here. Perfect. Thank、okay. you. Hi. So I will speak in English. I'm sorry. <laughs>、uh, that's all I have.、Um, I'm so happy to be here.、So、I, I think the question was, how many are interested in animation? Was that you? Who else interested in animation as a degree? Okay. All right. What about、um, visual effects? If you if you know the the that degree, I'll talk about that one.、Uh, motion media, motion graphics. Okay, illustration. Okay. All right.、Uh, game design. All right. Okay. So,、uh, what other ones do we have? There's a whole bunch. There's like forty at SCAD. A lot to choose from.、Um, I've been at SCAD for eighteen years. A long time. Uh, and I came out of the industry, and so what I want to talk about today is I do want to talk about what I've done in the industry, to to show you different aspects of it, and because it's kind of fun.、Uh, that I'm I'm I've been around since the software's been invented, and then we invented the ways to make animation,、uh, and and I thought that was cool.、Uh, I'll talk about careers in animation because I think there's some hidden careers that you might not know about that I, are very important. And then the animation program, I've helped shape it with a team over the past 18 years, and I think we've really made something special.、Uh, so I'll present that to you. And then what most of you are really interested in, how to prepare your portfolio,、right? and what we look for. And then I'll tell you that at the end of it, oh there I'm going.、Uh, when I worked in the industry, I was one of the first reviewers to look at. The student, the graduate students coming into the industry、uh, as a first recruiter. So I saw those portfolios and knew who was going to be good in the industry and who where who we could, who we should hire. So I have a unique insight into that,、uh, the beginning and the end and everything in between. 
and then I hopefully can answer some questions that you have. Does that sound like what you came here for? Yes, all right, excellent. So super, super duper quick. This is where I've been. Um, my very first film was Prince of Egypt. Again, as their trainer, I was always teaching how to do the thing because we were figuring it out together. And then when they couldn't come to my classes anymore, I would go as an artist and help out on shots. So, so Prince of Egypt, I was helping with set, figuring out how to do the compositing for the film for 2D and 3D together. Uh, okay, but this one. Whatever you wish. All right, so Milan. I can also talk louder, but that's all right. Should I take this off? Because you'll get feedback. So Milan, I worked for training and then six months uh, as a compositor and looked up artist and also as a um, rendering person, watching just watching the renders behind the scenes. Lilo and Stitch, it doesn't matter. I, I helped with, with the shots that were replaced in a quick SWAT team fix because uh, uh, I was uh, on maternity leave for that. Brother Bear, big falling ice scenes. I'll, I'll show you some of this, I think. Anyway, so worked on a whole bunch of stuff, including EA, uh, went to EA to work on Madden, NASCAR, NFL coach, a whole bunch of other ones, worked with the Sims team, uh, but always there to talk between the artists and the, and the programmers because my second, my first degree is computer animation, my second degree is computer science. I program, but I know no math, which is hilarious. Anyway, so I've been there, and we helped invent it, and I bring this stuff into the classroom, and most of the professors that work with me also have been in the industry, and we still work in the industry. I write books about it. Right now, uh, uh, tomorrow on the plane, I'll be working with the third edition for Bring It Right, uh, which is my textbook, hybrid animation, and then I also write creepy novels. Very, very creepy. <laughs> I promise you nightmares with those. Um, anyway. So Prince of Egypt got my start there, helping build a studio and learning how to uh, work with some of the best artists in the industry in my first shots. I don't think that plays as much now. So learning how to take a 3D model basket with a texture, right? And we need painters to paint those textures. And then that becomes uh, what it looks like there. Right? The Hun Charge, we just studied this in my class the other night. Uh, this is a, the very first crowd simulation uh, that we worked on. Here's a very young me. I worked with two departments. <laughs> young, young me. And it was a great team, right? Super huge team. Uh, in the Florida studio, and we did some great things developing uh, systems for uh, how to make a whole bunch of Huns uh, that look like 2D, and this is back in the very beginning of the day. Lots of flags and cloth simulation, just like I saw in the room over here. You have the, the, the cloth simulation going on, very early days of cloth simulation. All the lanterns are 3D, and all the snow, and the fireworks. So when I wasn't working on shows, I was studying other shows that were in progress. And if there's anything I can I can say to you as a student, study everything. Just because it isn't the thing you're about, it can help you be better in your job. Right, so I studied Treasure Planet because I had access to it to see how they were doing it and putting things together. And that helped me um, in the future for future shows. Uh, worked on some stuff with this film. I was in grad school during Lilo and Stitch, so I worked on some scripts to help make uh, the, this exact shot work. These are 3D down here. Any shot that has a red plane is probably one of my shots that, that I helped composite. And then I finally got into 3D, and this is what we were inventing, how to make things move with little controllers on it. It was the beginning of 3D rigging and some bad muscle systems. Uh, but muscle systems are tough, uh, but they were good for the day. They're, they're now they're, they're very antiquated. Here's one of my shots. Uh, 
for Brother Bear. This is, let's see if I can get a cursor here. This is 3D. This is 2D. Can't see it, right? How cool is that? It's because we did our job well. Um, so this is a 3D piece of uh, polygons with a background painter. Um, can't think of his name right now. Who painted. Uh, and I applied that on there and it was animated by Eric Waglione uh, to match and look like it was just a piece of his eyes falling off. So next time you look at that shot, you'll catch it now because it does shine a little bit when it falls down the software of the day. Okay, so in animation, there's a lot of careers. I just told you mine, which is the small slice, and you heard me, and I'm not an animator. I am, but I didn't animate there. I animate now, uh, but there's all sorts of things. Um, in our degrees, we can do uh, pre-production, which is all of the wrong storyboard, concept, character design. Now, I'll look you in the eye, and I'm going to be honest. That's a tough place to get a job in. You have to be fast, have multiple styles, and be able to take direction and change things quickly. You can't hold your ideas dear. You have to crunch them up, do it again, until you get what the director wanted. Right? But you can do it. Right? So that there are jobs in the industry. You just have to fit that criteria. Uh, it's not just one style because you're just not going to work on one film your whole life. Um, animators, 2D and 3D. I do both because it's just animation. There's also stop motion. Uh, which which we don't have a degree for or a concentration selective. Uh, it's it's a fun medium. But these two here, this is really what I want to look at look at you and say this is an amazing area. Technical animation and technical artists. Uh, and I'll show you some some pie charts for this. So technical animators deal with cloth and hair. That's, I saw that story. Water, fur simulations, all of that. Not necessarily characters. Uh, technical artists, that's what I am. Uh, 3D modeling, rigging, texturing, rendering, um, and then if we can code, we get into tool making. They could go even further if you're pure, pure uh, computer science, we can build applications, you know, even render engines, uh, game engines, etc. Things that feed back in that maybe we're not making art, but we're making things for the artists. Right. Am I speaking okay? Is this an okay speed? Okay, all right. And then lastly, compositors and editors and colorists uh, have to have a good sense of timing. Uh, and jobs for that are in the motion media area and the computer area and animation area are a lot. Right? But often people forget that that's a, that's a career area. So a little bit further on the technical artists, since I'm here. I pulled the credits for some films recently, well, not too recently, and looked at how many animators there were, right? So here's the animators, this not slot here. Because we go into animation sometimes because we like to watch animation, but maybe we're not an animator. I like to eat food, but maybe I'm not a chef, right? Uh, so, so what are things I like to, to, to do anything? Uh, maybe decorate cakes better than, than um, make make the you know, I don't know what stuff to make soup dumplings. Those are tough to make. Um, so over here you can see for there's many more lighters, technical animators, visual effects artists, and tech directors. And the names change, the titles change throughout the years because nobody knows what those people do anyway. Uh, right? We're the magicians, but we're the ones maybe lighting it. Lighting is tough, tough people to find. There's not enough lighters. Uh, technical animators, cloth, hair, water, simulations. Great job. We need lots of them. Visual effects. This is more for uh, making the, the textures and making sure things look beautiful uh, and the colors, etc. And then tech directors helping build the tools and everything in between. Does that make sense? Right? Here there's Utopia, same thing. You see, the, there's way less animators than there are ever the else. 
In other words, nerds rule and we get the jobs. So, so and keep nerds, we know the word nerds, that's like my mantra. No. You don't know nerd? No. Very smart people who like Star Trek or Star Wars are very opinionated, which one's the best one, right? Okay, so um, just gonna say Star Trek. All right, so, so people who are technical, but also are creative and have an artistic eye, wow. Those are the Renaissance people that the industry needs, okay? So we spend and specialize in modeling, uh, which I do, motion and character, building tools, lighting, texturing, simulations, I mentioned all of this, um, and tool building, right, all of that. Just to give you some examples, this is from a world builder uh, piece of software. Uh, I teach how to write that software inside Maya, right? how to generate fields of grass, how to use render man to generate procedural clouds that look nice. Right? So scripting, right? scripting level, not quite pure code, uh, very useful, very hireable. Uh, and then there's rigging, which is also my, my specialty, uh, uh, taking the models and making it to be able to move. This is from my textbook. Right. Uh, there are, like, so for the rigging person, you might set up the controls and connect it, like, like a marionette connected to the character. But we'll need a more artistic modeler to go in and sculpt the shapes. And together we'll make a good, good character that then the animator take off and use, right? So all those skill sets come together. I'm just showing off my script here. I like that when it works. Okay. All right, so I try to speak that, that religion all the time because I don't think everyone knows about that. They just think about the animation, and there's so much more. Okay, so in our animation program, what we have is uh, we have foundations. And everyone, no matter what degree, starts in foundations. Right? So you could be sitting next to a fashion student, or an industry design student, or an architecture student. Sculpture, photography, you know, there's 40 of them. Studying, drawing, composition, color theory, all of those things that you need as an artist, even filmmakers need this as an artist to be able to communicate. Right? Things that we probably love anyway. Then in animation, for example, you choose a specialty. So 2D animation, right? Um, we, we don't use paper anymore. We transition from paper, and we're more on uh, the, the, the Cintiq tablets and drawing on uh, draw tablets, right? Uh, 3D character animation. Usually, right, right now, we still use Maya because that's the industry standard. Blender is great. There are other softwares that are great. Uh, but they're not the industry standard yet. There's boutique houses that use them. Um, but we, we, we go for feature animation level, and then that you can learn anything else after that. Storytelling and concept development is a specialty, and then technical animation, which I've done my best to pitch to you. What I'm super proud about is uh, the collab project and senior projects. What those are is for the senior year, after everyone's learned their specialty, we bring them back together to work on films. Films the students create, they design, they make them. Uh, and, I, and the rest of my, in my classes, I help lead them through to figure out how to work together. Because that's what the animation is. It's a collaborative spirit, right? Um, and I'm going to show you an example of that. But then animations in other degrees as well. It's not just animation. That's just the weird word I just said. Um, motion media. That's animation, like motion design, like, like uh, film titles and, te and typography. It's a graphic design that moves. Right? So if you don't like the acting that comes with the animation or the technical things that come with it, 3D, motion media, maybe done. Visual effects is uh, not character. They tend to focus more on uh, photo reel or putting things into films. Tough industry. 
or mine. It's a it's an industry in flux because the film industry wants lots, and they they don't want to pay a whole bunch. So it's it's in a moment right now. With the market chart, uh, with, with everything going on, visual effects uh, has has went on strike a while ago. Um, it will hopefully even out just a little bit, but that's 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 just a moment there. Whereas games, mine you know hasn't changed. It's there, and the, the game, the gamer base doesn't go away. It continues to grow. How many of y'all play games? Right, right. Who has a Switch and is on Zelda? Ah, see, I got you. I said, okay. Um, so you know all those games, and then for those that didn't raise your hand, I'll bet you play something. I'll bet you're a passive gamer. Um, somewhere out here, we're all gamers. And the thing is, is that as we get older, we're still gamers. So your game, your, the people that require games or gamification something continues to grow, and we want it everywhere. Uh, so that's a that's a huge thing. Now, a big question I get is, I like games. Do I go to animation or do I go to the IGGM department? And my answer is, if you like to how the game looks, that's animation. If you like the features and the design of how the game plays, that's IPG on the games, right? They're all about the design of it. Why Why do I play it? Why does the, the player keep coming back to play again? All right, so let's see. I want to show you an example of a film. So this is a senior, no, this is a thesis film, graduate level, by Huda. I smiled, but I've known who that said she first came to my office and showed me the storyboards of this film. And so many of us helped give input into this. Uh, so this is winning all sorts of awards, and I want to show you the level of this is a graduate student. I'll show you um, an undergraduate, I think, as well, uh, to balance it out. But I have to move this, or you're going to get feedback.
Would you like to hear a poem? Yes. was raised in a hen house. And she finally remembered that her home is in the ocean. Here, all of the students that work on this. Uh, so the thing that we teach beyond just the skills and the collaboration is the networking and how to assign shots, how to give critiques, how to get someone to understand what it is, what your vision is, and how to put it together. Uh, and that is is the it's, they call them the soft skills, the soft skills that you need to get into the industry. They're looking for, yes, are you great? Can you do great work? But more importantly, how are you going to work in your team, especially in animation, in game? So in the catalog, so I noticed back there, uh, you have this really cool sketchbook. Make sure you grab one of those who doesn't need it's a sketchbook that's not super precious, right? It's not leather bound. You can draw on this and doodle in this. And animators, you should be doodling and drawing gesture drawings of what you see in front of you. Right? This becomes future keyframes. There's also a list of things about the degrees, right? Just a nice little overview. And if you go on the website, you can see the catalog and list of, of classes. Right, and take a look at those to see which one, uh, you know, which one it is that you like. Uh, we've got, I just put them here real quickly. So different classes for 2D animation, 3D, storytelling and concept, technical animation. Uh, but the, you can take a look at it. And here's the thing, you don't have to decide which is the right degree for you until after your first year. I changed my major uh, after my during my freshman year. I, I walked into a room and went, "Wow, what is this thing called computer animation?" I'm in. They have four computers. That was it. They were painting. They were painting, you know, still lifes on the computer. It was just invented. Photoshop was version one. In the day, that was great. Um, let, I think I've got time. Let me show. I'd like to just to be even and fair. I want to show a three D. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. So, Slingshot, I just finished uh, with the team. This is one film where I have the, the film all the way through all of production. Usually I don't. They go between all the different professors. This one, they, they literally came up with the idea over a weekend, came into class and pitched it, and they wanted to do it differently. They wanted to render it in Unreal Engine which is real-time rendering like a game engine. And that is another thing to have on your, on your portfolio so it's uh, for the industry, right? It works out great that a lot of people, a lot of industry places are looking for that. Um, so let's take a look.
So many of these students started together in a collaborative project uh, where we run, we make a film in 10 weeks. Uh, and then they form their networks, they figured out who, who is good at what, who wants to do what, and then they come back together in the senior year to do something like this. And this is a 30, I can't count, 30 weeks. So it's, a, it's, it's a, one school year, it's a senior year. Okay, so let's talk about applying the scan and what they look for. Thank you for your patience. I uh, showed you cool stuff, and now this is how you get there. That's a lot of text. <laughs> so I'll, I'll focus you here. The biggest thing you're going to probably do is the, the visual arts type of portfolio uh, require, uh, application. Right? There's many different ones that you can do. Uh, if you're looking at the equestrian, that's uh, that is in Savannah, and you have you have to have a, an equestrian horse riding video. Generally, not what I do. Uh, though I grew up on horses, uh, and I draw them, but not studying there. Um, <laughs> we come back up. It's probably um, either visual arts or visual and time based. But you don't have to have animated already, right? You're coming to school to learn to animate. If you're coming to my department, I don't expect you to know it. When when I was at Disney, I would just look at gesture drawings, and I knew I could tell who was going to be my animator based on how you saw one illustration. Right? It's not really about the animation because I'm going to teach you how to do that. All right? So 10 to 20 of your best drawings, paintings, designs, prints, photography. You can read that. I'm going to just point to it. The biggest thing you got to do is edit, and that's what Miss Maggie here at the Portfolio Center and team are able to help you edit and bring it down to maybe not the ones that your favorites in your heart because you remember drawing this as your first time. That might not be your best one, but it's your favorite one, right? There's a difference. So finding that best piece of work that, that is 10 to 20 visual arts is 
that represents you. The, the scholarship committee that looks at those, um, or not sorry, scholarship, the application committee that looks at those, generally are not the animators. Right? Not me, but it's, it's missions people, and they know everything about foundation art, because right? we're going into foundation program. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me go through a couple slides, and then I'll, I want to ask, have you ask me questions. Now, if you're in, in a, a graduate program, for that, we do expect to see something about animation. Often people come from other degrees into the graduate program. Is anyone here looking to, at, at the graduate level? Okay. So I get a lot of architecture people come over. Illustration is our cousin. Right? Illustrators draw the keyframe. I teach them how to draw the other 23 drawings. All right, so for graduate portfolios, you're looking for something that shows your design skills. All right, so if you have character designs, if you have light drawings, absolutely important. Composition, line weight, uh, storyboards if you have them, if you have experience, uh, animation, animating, showing that. If you have experience with 2D or 3D, showing that. Now, if there's something missing, and sometimes there, there generally is at the grad level, because we try to bring everyone to the same level to prepare you for those 700 level classes. They'll assign up to three 500 level classes, which are very intense. The, they're like two, um, each one is like two undergraduate classes in one. Right, so for instance, I teach the 2D, 3D animation 500 level class and the modeling rigging uh, 500 level class. The other one is storyboarding and history of animation. All right, so if you're missing any of those, then they'll, they'll assign that just to get you ready. Very important, because then if you get if you get to the 700 level without those, you are not ready for me there. And it's a tough go. I had one student who accidentally got through without that one 500 level class. She did it, but it was not pleasant. <laughs> I don't wish that on anyone. Um, so a good portfolio. Uh, I do review these. Uh, I'm, I'm not the one that's doing them this year. Another professor doing it this year, but I have reviewed these. Uh, and this is very close, and there's a website there that you can look at the same thing. In your your statement, I think it's a, um, I totally forgot what, what we call that letter. Statement of interest or letter of interest, the letter that you write to the committee. Um, I'm not, oh, here, here's a tip. We all grew up liking art. We all were that child. I don't want to know about that. I assume that. What I want to know is, what do you want to do next? Why do you want this? What are you going to do now? Does that make sense? Right, that's what I'm looking for in, in that letter. So then I can look at the, the work and think about where it is in the program that you're, you're going to go. Okay. Um, so for, you saw the, the Ocean Duck film, that's a thesis film. So uh, Huda was a graduate student and that was her film at the end. Um, so, and graduate students work together to work on their theses. Okay, so for undergraduate requirements, uh, and here's the thing, when you apply to SCAD, you don't have to have everything ready in one go. You can kind of start the application process, and then they assign an a, a admissions advisor who can help you through the rest of it, right? And, and help you with the, the portfolio center is a great way uh, to make sure you can get everything ready. And, and I'm assuming we've worked together a long time um, with the Portfolio Center here. Um, so transcripts, proof of English proficiency. proficiency. <laughs> that is hilarious that I couldn't say that word in my own language just then. Uh, letter of reference. I believe your professors that you worked with, someone you worked with, um, maybe not your family. They, they're supposed to think you're great. That's their job. Okay. And then we talk about portfolio. portfolio. Resume. And interestingly, resume, I, I know you don't have a whole lot, but, or CV, if you do extracurriculars or volunteer work, that's important to me. Right? Even if you do hourly, you know, in, in, in the States we call it like flipping burgers or working on a small stand, 
That's important to me. It shows me some work ethic. Um, and then your statement of purpose. That's the word I was trying to find earlier. What is it you want to do? Okay. Question in the back. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so you'll note here a lot of this is optional for the undergraduates, but I would put it in anyway. Right? Let's be that person that goes that extra bit to tell us more about you and who you are. Right? The graduate advisor does uh, work, I'm sorry, the ad admissions advisor does work with you if they see something that's a little missing. Right? So for instance, if the grades are a little lower, then sometimes we get that in science and, and math. Sometimes, maybe not. Then we can make up for it by showing the portfolio or showing the statement of purpose or something you know, else you might have been working on a portfolio instead of you know, some, something else. Does that make sense? Yes. They are, they're in the, the transcripts themselves. Um, I don't believe so. I hope not because I didn't either. So, but, but let me tell you a story. Wait, I got a story. I took Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and, and my sweet professor, I loved her. Mrs. Lane, who had my brothers, I, and, and I had to promise her I would not be a troublemaker like my brothers. Um, she came to me and she said, oh, I see you not signed up for calculus. Like, oh, no, no, I won't need that. I'm going to be an artist. Okay, then, and she walked away. But do you know I had to go back and teach myself math for, for my computer science side of things and for the, the writing tools in 3D? I wrote her a card to tell her I was wrong. <laughs> It can come later. But yes, good question. Now, there are, um, uh, my brain is stopped. There are math classes in our general education, just a warning, and there are social sciences and things like that. But the difference is we teach them from an artistic standpoint. So, math, when they teach it, is based on the things us professors have given them. This is the math we need. In animation, or, or what have you, so it makes more sense. Right. And then let me show this one. Um, so, graduate students, when you're applying transcripts from your undergraduate, everything, even if you did like one class and one university, if another, you know, you still have to have that transcript. Um, same thing, proof of, proof of English. Two recommendation letters, and you notice know, these are all required. This is how I see my grad students. All right, so it's a little more elite, a little more difficult to get in as a grad student. Uh, so because we want, you've got a long road to get through all the studies and then get into the thesis program. So the MFA has a thesis, which is a large film, mostly self-guided. It's on your own you know, with professor's help, but you're not in the classroom. So that takes focus right, and dedication and then and a voice you have to really be able to want to make that film because there's 5,000 other reasons to not make it now there is another degree called the MA uh, we don't have it in the Atlanta campus it's in the Savannah campus it might be online as well but it, it doesn't help you you can't do the online I think um, but it's in the Savannah campus and the difference is that uh, MA in the States, uh, you cannot teach at the college level with the MA. You have to have the MFA. Many other countries, the MA is okay for teaching at the college level. The MA does not have the thesis component. It's just the, the classes for the skills without that film at the end. And so it's a little shorter at the time. Okay, questions and answers. Any questions? Oh, you've got to have a million of them. Yes? What about physics? Physics? Yeah. It is, it is not required. No, but we do have some physics classes more for, I laugh because I got a C in physics. Okay. But then later I went back and studied quantum mechanics and that was okay, so go figure. Um, and I liked it. I grew up. Um, physics is tough though. The only thing we use it for is we have it for like physics and game design, understanding that. Okay. 
So I'm trying to think of some questions that I get. Uh, the differences between the campuses. So we have the Savannah campus and the Atlanta campus. I've taught at both. Uh, the Savannah campus is near the beach. Uh, it gets a little warm, but not Taiwan warm. I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> you're safe there. You think it's like winter. Uh, it, it's it's a big, it's a little city, but the, the campus is all throughout the city. It's, it's 78 or 80 buildings all the way across in the bus system. A uh, very, very sleepy town that it's like a big town or a little town together. It, it's un unlike any other, it's beautiful. And then the Atlanta campus, we have three, four, four, the fourth building now, all together next to each other in Midtown Atlanta. Atlanta is a bigger city, um, but where we are is walkable, called Midtown. That's not downtown Atlanta, um, but it is a city with bus systems and taxis and, and all the fun we get and, and great food in, in the city of Atlanta. Uh, both of them are four hours apart on campuses. Now, the classes and the degrees are the same. We work together to make sure that we're teaching the same thing. But you'll find differences. Right? So there are some degrees that we have in Savannah that we don't have in Atlanta. Like sound design has the degrees in Savannah. Um, I'm sure there's others, but I can't think of them. That's the big one. Uh, performing arts is in Savannah, but we're getting the minor in Atlanta now. All right, so, so there's differences like that just based on size. Atlanta is about 4,000 students, maybe, and Savannah is about, I think it's 12,000 students, so, so half the size. Then the, the way the animation classes work, uh, there are, are, are our senior projects are a little bit smaller in Atlanta, and, but we have more of them. And then they have a few big senior projects in Savannah. Differences like that. But you can go back and forth. You can choose one semester or one year in one campus and then go to the next campus um, and go between them. And then we have a location on the cross grants uh, as well for the summer. I think the summers, it might be all year round now for a quarter there to go study art history, which is why we can choose to be there. Um, and, and you can go between the campuses. Uh, the La Cosse France only houses, I believe, like 300 students. Very, very small. Uh, tuition's the same. Uh, you just have to pay travel costs to get to La Cosse. And then uh, the dorm rooms are the, the same cost throughout. Great dorm rooms. Uh, just, Beautiful. I wish I had pictures of that, but you can go online and find those. I, I've been there. They're just beautiful. I've stayed in them uh, for workshops. Uh, and then the last thing I can say is that Atlanta is also a great place for internships. Right? If you're looking for internships um, in the state of Georgia, they're talking about Savannah as well, but specifically in, in the animation motion media, we have some in, in Atlanta. We have a whole department that works with you on that, career services. And student success. They're your advisors and they're your advisors while you're at SCAD and after you graduate. So when you're ready for a career change or you need help later on, you can still come back and ask questions. Like they're there for you. They're a great resource. And we have a department there will help you with your resume, uh, with your portfolio, and, and helping you get, uh, get in the industry. They do interviews with people that are recruiting, etc. Right, so we try and help you. All along the way, you've got lots of people to guide you. And also, just to speak to that really quickly, we also have very strong student groups, um, very strong international student groups, so that the, the mom and dad, your, your kids are taken care of there. Right there, because we have people, they're not going to be alone. Um, I'm, I'm a mom, I've got two kids, they graduated from SCAD. Well, one graduated from SCAD, the other was almost done. He is studying his MFA. Uh, so, so I know, like you, you send the, kid, the child away and make sure they're taken care of. Uh, and and they're, they are there for them. And we, we have a fabulous groups for, for the students to, to find new friends, um, both from their hometown sometimes and from other countries. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? If you have to learn the basic coding skills for the graduate admission department, because uh, although I uh, 
So if you're just doing animation, like 2D or 3D animation or storytelling, there's no coding there. Don't let me scare you. Thank you. Yes, you can. <laughs> cool. But I'm reaching out. So, so if, you, if you don't code, don't worry about it. But if you do code or you're curious in it, oops, that's this one, technical animation. This, this is where my coding friends go. Good question. That's right. Yeah, don't let me scare you away. Just most of the time, I get people who are somewhat into code, and they just think animation's not for them. Like, no, we need you. Good question. All right, so I'm going to give you some con contact information of our um, director of admissions, Richard Yip. Um, you can read that. Um, R. Yip at stat.edu. Uh, he is the admissions uh, director, right? And he can answer other detailed questions. Um, and help me out with people who have been here for many years and we our mission is to help you get there and help you find the right degree right even if you come in you've got that first year to, to kind of get your feet underneath you enjoy drawing enjoy meeting new friends that that love stuff just like you do right so, so i'm just going to guess I'm, I'm sure this is true everywhere as an artist we generally are in a room where maybe we're, there's like two or three of us, but everyone else doesn't understand us at all. Right? Yeah, okay, I got some nods. You come here, we all gotcha. We all understand because we are that person. It's wonderful to be in an environment where everyone's creative and they're supportive, and they're all, but they're all reaching for not just art for art's sake, which is fine, but art as a career, as a creative career, and that's what SCAD is dedicated to. So I want to thank you so much. Look, I kept that almost almost an hour to the time of my love time. Um, thank you for your attention, and, and I'm glad I got the microphone thing sorted out so you could hear me. Um, I appreciate all the work you do, like getting the students prepared. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, and you can you can email uh, Richard for any other questions you have. We'll help you get there. All right, thank you. Thank you.谢谢教授那后面有没有什么问题要询问的关于比如说刚才前面有介绍到那个动画的产业或者是学校毕业之后学生的发展还是你申请学校然后教授刚刚过程都讲得很详细嘛但是你有如果有个人的疑问你现在
can speak to that. Yeah. yeah so I do want to know what's your opinion on that in the future innovation industry. Mm -hmm. um, so. There will always be abuse of the easy button, right? So, so businesses who have no art concern and, and couldn't care less what, I'm going to be frank, trash they put out, they're going to go, oh, I can use those, press a few buttons, pay a few bucks, make money. That will happen. But then hopefully as, as cultured individuals, we will not buy in, buy their products, and that will then tank. That's my hope. And that's usually what we see, right? So in Illustrator, the, the software, every time they put a new vector brush in there, you will see that show up on fabrics. Somebody pressed the easy button, and then you realize everybody pressed the easy button, and everyone has stars upon their, you know, their purses, and then it goes away. So I've been using the AI, and I was in the alpha testing for it for Midjourney um, and others way back, like, a year, last January. It's been a long time I've been in it. And it's already in my classes. I use it as a tool. And I encourage artists to, to get ahead of that, use it, learn the tool so that you can push your styles because it's great for that. I give it my drawings. I say, here, I want to see this. Put an apple in their hand. Style of Van Gogh, style of Monet, you know, style of Dr. Seuss plus you know, Jackson Pollock, which is fun, you should try that. Um, and then you get it back, you're like, oh, okay. Put that up on the board, now I will make me, my version, but I use that to push me, right? That's what we need to do. Um, and I have not tested the Photoshop tool uh, that they have, uh, but I would use it the same way, right? I, I, I've got to review, I just got a video in to review the copyright law on it, because. Um, my understanding is whatever it makes, you can't copyright it, right? Because I could take, you could write a paragraph, give it to the system, and it'll give you back something. Um, and then I could take those same words. So it's not copyrightable because it's not, it's not really original until we put our hand to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yes, there, there are concerns, right? So, but. I, I, my hope is that those those will die out as we take that tool and make it better, right? That's our job is to be beat it out. But let that thing take care of AI, take care of uh, uh, doubling my resolution on my image. Let let it do you know fix that background and rotoscope that I don't really feel like doing. That's great. That it's gonna, it's already shining there, um, and we've been using it. So in game design, in game engines, we've had AI for a while. Um, kind of stupid AI, but it was there. Uh, but yeah, so it, it is a valid concern because there will be some issues. Good question. Uh, Olivia, okay. For that, I really love original characters. Yeah, we start with fan art because that, that's what I was saying before. And you caught on to it, like it feels so great because I really want to do. I can't even tell you what my fan art would be. I'll just pick on you know Harry Potter or something in some bizarre you know science fiction land is what I would do. Um, sorry, I was just drawing it in my head because there it is. Uh, but that's for me. That's for me, and I get such enjoyment out of that. But then your original art and things from that, I think, would be would be better. And here's why. Um, and, and this goes for the industry too. If I apply to Disney, the last thing I want to give them in my portfolio is their own creations because they know it so well. My creation will only draw draw criticism because it's not their version. It's not on model. It's not right. Uh, so we remove that by taking that away. There you go. Good question. I have questions, y'all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Wendy. No. Uh, well, since now, I've got more time this morning. You know, I don't even know what you're going to do. You can do it. Come on. Hey, Ron. Oh, you got me, girl. 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 You got me, girl
在讲座的同学啊，刚刚有有些同学有拿到那个问卷，麻烦你帮我填写一下，然后我会给你在你那个呃学校学校的那个 dashboard。那同学也可以呃，等一下留下你们的资料，因为呃，下次进学校来的时候，我们也可以直接通知你，就是呃呃学校的活动，好、哦，或者是呃刚才刚才有留那个 u c h a 的那个 email 对不对？如果同学留下那个问卷，我们直接会把你们的那个联络 email 给学校，那学校呃接下来这几天就会陆陆续续给你们一些关于学校的呃申请的一些资讯，那。呃，除了学校会到我们中心来举办一些活动以外，他其实在一年当中也会好几次到呃呃饭店举办一些呃校友的分享，哦，所以同学如果对这所学校有兴趣的话，等一下陆队会帮我们填写一下，那我会给各位一下呃学校的 schedule。那一起的同学呢，就是呃有有签到的同学都可以到柜台去领这个 schedule。OK， 好，那今天参加的同学啊，有些是可能是呃第一次来来我们一起哦。那一起主要是在协助学生准备做笔记，所以如果说你们在想要申请动画相关的呃科系，需要你们的那个 portfolio 哦，那我们中心会协助你怎么样去准备你的 portfolio。所以如果有任何问题，呃，等一下可以跟我们工作人员询问一下，好、哦，怎么样的课程或是哦要怎么样协助你完成这些课程。好,好，最后问一下，有没有问题 ？Any question？ 没有，没有了，来 ，OK。那，大声一点。好。For coding, it depends. For animation. Anything really to get you started, Python is fine. It, it's a great language. Uh, in Maya, for instance, you can use Python, but it actually slows it down. Instead, we use Mel, which is Maya's own language. It's what it's based on.、Uh, but Python tends to be a pretty good general、uh, language that you can use anywhere, right?、Um, that's yeah. You, we, You don't have to go like into C plus plus land. We'll leave that for the the computer science golden people that want to make big tools. Good question. I I personally also like processing because、uh, it's fun and I can do things really quickly、uh, for game for games. Yes. Um. What? Um. 好，如果没有问题的话，我们今天活动到这边哦。那当然，如果你不方便在大众面前去问教授问题，教授会留下来一下下时间，所以你们等一下也可以呃个别来询问一下教授。好、嗯、，OK， I'll look out there. Yeah, I'll use. OK, yeah, yeah. OK， 好，那我们今天的活动到这边，那。好，我们再一次谢谢教授这次的活动啊！谢谢。